We're going to begin in just a couple of seconds. Stay tuned. In the meantime, please introduce yourselves in the chat. And here we go. Could you please share the screen? All right, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. My name is Hannah Siddiqui and I'm your host joining you from New York City. I'm the lead North America for Women Power Up Network, founder of Agile in Education USA. Welcome to a very special event of Women Power Up North America gathering. And I would like to especially welcome our speaker, Ms. Lena Patel. Hi, Lena. Hello, everyone. She's the top 50 woman of 2020, author of Raise Your Innovation IQ, and I will introduce her in depth in a little bit time, okay? So it feels like a long time since we had the last North America gathering, didn't we? But it's good to be back. We have 113 registration from 24 different countries. How awesome is this? It is so good to see you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I will give you a little rundown of our session today. We're going to begin with a intro session and a community update with Priya Patra, founder of Woman Power of Network. Hi, Priya. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you see me? And then we're going to have a short presentation by Lena Patel and followed by a QA session, a discussion session. Please have your cameras on if you have a question and would like to take part, if you'd like to participate in the discussion session. And after that, we will have a, a closing session. Um, and then we're going to end the session after that. Okay, so um, it's now time, I think, for a virtual huddle. And I would like my team members to please turn on your cameras, which I so everyone knows who our team members are. Priya Patra, she's the founder of Women Power Up Network. Priscilla, she's the lead in Europe. Hi. Hey, Ryan. We have Abigail, she's the lead Africa. Hi, Abigail. And we have Agaila, she's the director um, of, um, what is your title, please? Director, uh, creative director, and she's the founder of Now Hello, everyone. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. All right. So are we ready for a virtual huddle? Yes, let's do it. Yes. All right. Let's throw our hands in the air together. How are we feeling today? Or this? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Let's All right. Let's Why go. are we here today? <laughs> to be wowed and vow to what to, to get my them. innovation iq power. Yeah. innovation iq that's right and power styles power style <laughs> leadership and power styles right awesome all right now are you ready to have an amazing session with lena patel of course. Yay, we'll Lina, <laughs> let's go. Let's go for it. All right, thank you so much for that virtual huddle, for that energy. Now, I, uh, without any further ado, I would like to welcome Priya Patra. She's going to give us a community update. Welcome, Priya. Yeah. So thank you, Hana. Uh, we are uh, going to talk about what we did last month. As you all know, Women Power of Network was incepted on January 26, 2020. And I show this slide in every session because we want to keep ourselves grounded with our vision and mission, as well as our values. Uh, we are not a business, but we are a community with a purpose. And uh, today we are a strong community of 550 uh, members and uh, we have two groups, LinkedIn as well as Facebook. And I encourage everyone to join our groups so that we can make our vision a reality. What is our vision? Empower, 
individuals with the right support and the right skills to transform the future. And we are on a mission to provide a platform to enhance leadership qualities. And it is gender agnostic. Although our focus is on women, but men are also welcome. And we truly believe being good enough is amazing because you don't have to be an expert to power each other up. And that's why we also say we power up. And when we do that, together we rise. And this wouldn't have been possible without a strong team behind yes. us. And here is our team. Uh, to introduce Agalia, as uh, Hannah has already introduced, uh, so I'll keep it short. She's a founder of Noun and Verb. She's our creative person uh, behind the events. And uh, she's, the beautiful flyers, Christ, that you will see are all her creations. We also do have Hannah Siddiqui. She is the North America region lead. Yeah, hi, Hannah. And she is leading this event today. We also do have Priscilla. She is the Europe lead, uh, Women Power of Network. Hi, Priscilla. And the newest addition to our team, Abigail Sandala. Abigail is our Women Power of Network Africa lead. So Abigail, uh, would you want to introduce and say hi to the community? Abigail, Abigail we can't hear you if you are on mute. Uh, yes. Are you there? Me. I thought she was. Yeah. Abigail, you're on mute. We can't hear you. We can see you very well, but can't hear. Okay, thank you. I I couldn't unmute myself because it was telling me the host needed to unmute me. <laughs> thank you so much, Priya, and thank you to everyone that has joined us today. I am Abigail Sandala, as introduced, from Zambia. So whether you are or not, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. COVID-19 has accelerated digital transformation, breaking the physical barriers, turning us into true global citizens. We are more in need of collaboration than ever. That is why initiatives that are driven by global, global initiatives instead of individual initiatives are greatly appreciated. A woman, especially in Africa, has been overlooked for the longest time, limited to childbearing and managing homes that are core of every woman's heart is inher inherent empathy, love, resilience, and trust. That is why I'm so excited for this particular platform that is focusing on women in leadership, modern leadership. We need to be more intentional, more collaborative, but also engaging our male folk to believe and support our vision. We are not here to compete, but to be more impactful. As women power up, we give us a collective voice for a global impact. I'm excited to be here and I'm looking forward to what Lena has to say. Thank you so much, Priya. Oh, was awesome, Abigail. That was so short, sweet and impactful. Yes, and we look forward to working with you and uh, make our vision a reality. A little update on what is happening, what's happening in our community. Uh, last, last month, we collaborated with IAPM, that is International Association of Project Managers, and we co-created an event, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World. And uh, it was about celebrating uh, women, Women's Day, and we were forging positive visibility of women we chose to challenge. If you guys have missed the session, uh, the recording is there on our YouTube channel. I will provide the link on the chat. Please go ahead and watch it. It was a very, very impactful session given by Dr. Wilma Slenders and Julia Khan from Germany. And uh, next month, as you all know, is Mother's Day. So we are going to celebrate Mother's Month. And details will be shared soon. Watch this space for more. And with this, 
I will hand over the stage to uh, Hannah again to wow us and uh, help us to raise our innovation IQ. So Hannah, over to you. Thank you, Priya, for the community update and introduction. Abigail, once again, welcome to the community. You're going to love this network. You're going to love this community. Um, sure, now, let me welcome and let me read a little bio of our speaker today, um, um, Alina Patel. Um, Alina Patel is the founder and CEO of Sandbox to Boardroom, author of Razor Innovation IQ and a leading expert on the future of work. She partners with leaders to help them navigate disruption, drive innovation, and capitalize on new business growth opportunities by leveraging their number one asset, their people. Uh, she's named one of the top women of 2020 and recognized with a Woman of Distinction Award for pioneering gamulation as a revolutionary leadership training methodology. Lena and her team have helped drive new ideas, new thinking, and new business models for organizations in 16 plus industries. Um, advised CEOs and senior executives worldwide and have been featured by leading media like NBC, Bloomberg, Fox News, ESPN, and more. And now it is my distinct honor to welcome Lena P Patel and share her insights, her views on innovation and power styles. Welcome, Lena. The Thank stage you, is yours. Hannah. Thank you so much. Thank you to this, to, uh, this community for having me, inviting me. And thank you to all of you for being here. We have so many people from every continent, which is so wonderful that we can come together um, and bring, you know, just bring, break down barriers and break down borders in this way. It's incredible. So thank you for, for joining us today. So I wanna talk about how we can raise our innovation IQ, why it's important, why it's relevant for you today. Um, and and, and what, what it's gonna take for us to grow as a leader for us to grow our team, whatever capacity you're in. I, I, you know, I know from some of you, we've got a range of, of people here. Some of you are coaches and consultants, we've got a lot of project managers here, uh, people from in various capacities in the workforce. So a real, a real range of people here. And whatever, really whatever role you play in the workplace and however you're contributing, this last 12 months has really taught every single one of us that we need to be so mindful, so present with how we're showing up, how we're delivering value to our customers, to our clients, to our colleagues, um, because our primary goal has really been for a lot of companies, for a lot of businesses to number one, stay afloat, really, you know, a lot of our businesses have been disrupted in various ways and so we're looking to really just keep the lights on keep operations going at a baseline um, for all of us we're looking now to see uh, to determine how we're going to stay relevant going forward because you know for, for i've seen a lot of companies where suddenly the market is not responding in the way that they expected uh, we're seeing that new opportunities have opened up there you know that there's new um, spaces that have evolved in the last is in the last month uh, because the ch the way that we're uh, you know responding to technology the way, the lockdown and so on so a lot of changes that we're experiencing and this is our time to really really dive in and get granular about how we can as individuals make more an impact. So I want you to think, as we kick off this session, I want you to think about what your differentiator is. You as an individual, as a leader, how are you separating yourself? What value are you adding to the marketplace that nobody else is adding? And then I also want you to think about it from a company level, the organization you work for. How is your, how is your company, your organization, or your own business, you know, if you're a business owner, how are you differentiating yourself in the marketplace? because this is really gonna be the key to standing out right now. And file that away, think about it as I'm sharing, uh, sharing uh, with you over the next little while, um, because it's gonna become really super relevant. It's really gonna be the key to your kingdom right now. Okay, so um, I want you to think about, uh, all, all of this to say is, you know, we're looking for ways that we can not only just stay afloat, 
not only stay relevant, but actually to hopefully be ahead, to really look at everything in the marketplace and say, well, great, there's all this disruption, but but there's opportunity that's come out of all of this, which is just wonderful. So how can we take advantage of this opportunity? And I want you to give, I want to give you a visual um, right now as we kick off. I want you to think about an iceberg, right? Think about the Titanic, if that's your, you know, your connection to an iceberg. Think about a big iceberg in the ocean. And if you think about the when we think about the iceberg, we really think about the ice that we see, obviously, above the ocean. But really, that's just 20% of the iceberg. The, the mass of the iceberg, 80% of that is beneath the ocean, and we can't see it. So what we can see, what we can see that's above the ocean are, 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 are all the knowledge we have, all the skills that we have. And we, as individuals and as companies, we tend to do what is sustainable. We tend to do what we know because it's comfortable, it's safe, uh, it's predictable. We're getting certain kinds of results, so we keep doing that. So we tend to do what's sustainable versus what's disruptive. But if you think about what's below the ocean surface, the 80%, these are all the missed opportunities that are available because uh, because of the changing environment, there are all the all the areas, the skill sets, the opportunities that we're that we're missing. Right. So, um, when I talk about raising your innovation IQ, and some of you are probably wondering, what is that? What does it mean? What is it? What is innovation IQ? I'm talking about developing yourself in areas that we don't we aren't traditionally thinking about uh, opening up our, uh, uh, um, opening up ourselves. I want you to think about, you know, at, at, when in, in the education world, as an example, um, we were taught IQ is a good thing. We were taught um, education smarts is a good thing. And I don't think that's as relevant today as it was perhaps, you know, for our parents' generation or their parents' generation. We're living in such a, a world where everything is changing so much that we need to now not be thinking about our IQ, uh, our EQ, that's also just been a popular term as well. We really need to be more emotionally connected and intelligent in, in the way that we're engaging and interacting with each other. But we need a new level of IQ. And that's, uh, that's what I call um, innovation IQ. And the reason we need innovation IQ is because in this environment, the skills, the education that we had is not the thing that's going to take us forward into the future what we need to stay relevant is going to be our ability to be better creative problem solvers we need to be able to be able to think differently in order to be able to address the challenges that um, that we're going to be faced with and if you think about all the technology that we're embracing right now all the automation that's happening um, we're not humans we as human beings are not meant to be doing the work that robots do we're meant to be tackling problems, uh, tackling real world sol uh, solutions, and we can we can only do that with this, with our mind, with the way that we think. Computers can't do that; they can't do that work for us. So that's going to be our advantage in the future. So that's that's really the the premise of being able to raise our innovation IQ is to be better problem solvers and add value in this world. Okay, and our danger, I think. Um, is that or the mistakes that we make is that we get really complacent as human beings and as individ individuals. Uh, we think there's lots of time and COVID has shown us that there is no time. We need to move now if we're going to stay relevant, if we're going to, you know, if we're going to keep, uh, keep the lights on, keep operations running, keep food on the table, we need to be moving with the times. Um, we need to move with speed and agility. We can't be repeating the thing that we did yesterday because frankly that don't, no, no longer will work for us going forward. Um, and we need to be no longer preserving the status quo. We really need to be looking ahead at what's coming, what's around the future, uh, you know, what's what's ahead, what's beyond the curve. Okay, so all of the, these are all the things we need to be working on. Um, and what I want to share with you today is a really a three-in-one strategy. Uh, I promised that I would give you a strategy to help you to grow as a leader to grow your team's capabilities and to also grow your sales. So this is a three in one strategy uh, and I'm going to share it by sharing my story. And hopefully in hearing my story, it's going to help you to 
tap into your story and actually all the opportunities that you have in front of you that you may have missed. Um, so I just to kind of give you some background. So my, my entrepreneurial journey started at the age of four years old. My first mentor was my grandfather at the age of four and he was a direct disciple of Gandhi. He was mentored by him from the age of 16. He, Gandhi came to speak at his school and he was so inspired by his message. He just decided that was, that was gonna be his path and his mission in life. And um, he, he, he followed him for the next 16 years. He was part of that journey, uh, um, taking India to independence. So, um, that was my upbringing. So I was rooted in, in yoga and in mindfulness and meditation. I learned, you know, what it takes to, to lead people towards change, to, um, to move them in a new direction, do it with nonviolence, to stand up for what I believe in, um, and, you know, enroll people and take them on a journey with, uh, take them on a journey with me. Um, at, at the age of 16, I became a Buddhist and I actually became a young woman's leader in an international lay Buddhist organization. And part of that responsibility for me was guiding young people, young women on their personal and professional career journey. So did a lot of mentoring at that age. I studied psychology in college and I love that. I think I would have, you know, gone into private practice at one point if I, if I wasn't doing what I'm, what I'm doing now. Um, but I really love to understand how the human mind works. But, and I also love the statistics and data analysis part of, 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 of psychology as well. Um, but my big passion, my big dream uh, was the arts. I was a professional dancer, so I trained uh, um, from a very early age and I was a professional dancer for many years, a soloist with one of the UK's leading dance companies. And uh, for those of you that are maybe old enough, I'm showing my age now, but I, dan uh, I, I opened for Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart uh, with the Eurythmics, um, for those of you that remember them in the 90s. And, had a wonderful time uh, touring um, the world. When I retired from that space, I was artistic director of my own company. When I retired from that space, I transitioned into coaching um, and started working. And this is sort of when I moved to North America, to Canada and the US. And I started working with um, companies like um, Cirque du Soleil. Uh, I worked with various shows, um, Celine Dion, uh, Wayne Brady, Jamie King. So people in music and arts and entertainment and film, uh, really just bringing them to, to high performance, um, you know, acting as a coach and a strategist for, for them. And there's a, there's, there's a time in, uh, yeah, at this point in my career where I started to get kind of a little bit itchy. I felt like I wanted to make a bigger impact in the world to reach more people. And so I segued into, segued into serving um, a corporate audience people, companies and businesses in finance and healthcare and technology uh, and e-commerce and retail and so on. And started you know, sharing the strategies that I was teaching uh, in this market, in this space. So here's where it gets really interesting. What I, what I did at that time was that I actually didn't share my background. I didn't share what I had done until that point. Uh, in in the in the in the world of arts, um, as a coach, as a consultant in that space, as an artist in that space, because I didn't think it was relevant to corporate, and uh, I, I I guess I shut a part of myself down. And there was a time when I spotted a gap, and this was sort of around the time when millennials were entering the workforce, and corporations were going, oh, you know, throwing their hands up in the air and said, I don't know what to do with them. I don't know how to connect with them. I don't know how to relate to them. Uh, they have a totally different worldview. And I, I saw an opportunity at that point in the marketplace to train these young people in a way to prepare them for leadership um, by connecting them with a world that they knew, the world of gaming, um, the world of learning through play, learning through technology, learning through videos, learning through simulations. And so I developed a uh, training methodology called Gamulation, and I've done a TEDx talk about that, so you're welcome on TED talk about that so that you can, you're welcome to take a look at that. Um, but the idea was, but this, this methodology really just sort of disrupted the training space um, and brought fresh, a fresh perspective to the training world. And a lot of companies at that point started to ask me, well, how did you do that? 
how did you develop that? Can you develop a gamulation or you know a training for our organization? Can you share your process with us? And that was when I really started to fall into my sweet spot. Was I because I was bringing what I realized was that in order to serve these companies, I was bringing all of my background, uh, all of my experience to the table, and everything that I did became highly, highly relevant. So you know when I think about. Um, my psychology background and that training allowed me to really help companies to capitalize on their talent, to leverage their workforce, to build connection and communication. Um, when I look, when I think about my research and statistics background, that's now allayed, uh, allowed me to develop a research and um, data uh, arm, arm to my business, where we now collect data and do the research for companies that are looking to understand the market a little better, so they can make really good decisions. Uh, you know, when I think about my uh, mentorship and being um, the experience I had growing up, with my grandfather, uh, um, how that allowed me to. I, it made me care deeply about the world that we live in and how we show up in the impact we make. And now, as I work with corporations, I, I, I'm not only looking to help them grow in revenue, grow their sales, I'm looking at how they can leverage what they do so that they can make more of an impact. And in, the, you know, in corporate speak, that's corporate social responsibility. How, you know, how can you use your technology, your, your skills, or your solutions, everything that you have to somehow make the world a better place? And so it's really been exciting for me to be able to tie um, our innovation with corporate social responsibility to with optimizing talent in the workforce uh, and, 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 you know, and helping companies develop their diversity and inclusion initiatives. Right. So I share all of this to say to you that I, you know, I, what I've seen a lot in my, in my career is that as we get, as we evolve in the workplace, we put ourselves into little buckets, in little boxes. We've had marketing, a marketing degree or marketing experience, so we call ourselves marketers. Uh, you know, we've had sales training and now we're salespeople or you know, project managers, and we, we understand how to manage projects. And um, you know, that's our training, and we identify ourselves in that way. And I think that's super limiting right now. And I think our big goal is now to not hide who we are, but actually to draw upon our background, our experiences, um, the, the things that we've done that we have deep expertise in and bring that to the table and see how we can start to connect the dots. Right? Start to bring together, like I did, I was, you know, to bring together mindfulness and psychology and innovation and creativity and corporate social responsibility and, and find this beautiful sweet spot that becomes our differentiator in the marketplace. So I'm going to challenge you to do the same, to really, to number one, I want you to, um, you know, to connect the dots, look at all your different levels of expertise and start to connect the dots. And then number two, I want you to think about how do you make that, integrate them, integrate those skills into a top 1% skill set. So now you are different from everybody else in the marketplace. Huge, huge game changer. All right, you can use those insights now to develop new products in the marketplace, uh, to tap into a new industry, uh, to open up to a new market that you haven't considered before. And I'm going to give you a quick example of, um, you know, people, maybe someone you're well, well, all familiar, let's say, let's take Steve Jobs as an example, because we all know Apple and we all know Steve Jobs. If you think about his background, uh, he studied calligraphy in college. He was a Buddhist, uh, so the calligraphy, uh, opened up, you know, his the idea to have these beautiful fonts that he um, that he created for Apple. Uh, the Buddhist background created a desire for Zen and simplicity, which reflected in Apple's products that we use today. Uh, you know, his background in technology, the fact that he was uh, an incredible marketer and a fantastic speaker, made that you know made his presentations really wow the world, wow the audience. Um, so he was able to bring together marketing, technology, and calligraphy, and Buddhism, uh, and, and all of these skills to create something and really disrupt the marketplace. He you know, changed the game for technology, for music, for so many other industries. Okay, So just one example there. I want you to think about how you can do that for yourself. 
So with that, um, I want to pause here for a moment. I want to stop and take some questions. If you have any questions about uh, what I shared, the strategy that I shared, and, and I want to kind of give you a little, uh, a little premise. The, the strategy is in my book. It's called Polish. The strategy is called Polish Your Inner Polymath. And it's in my book, Raise Your Innovation IQ. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about it, um, we've got a ton of action steps that, that tell you how to just develop this a little bit further in this book. Um, so I just want to point you to that resource. Um, and I want you to introduce it to the word polymath. Um, the word polymath is having, it simply means having deep expertise in a lot of different areas and then integrating them into this top 1% skill set. Okay, so that's what I want you to do. Polish your inner polymath. Um, so with that, I'm going to open up to Q&A and take your questions about what I've shared. Um, uh, and, and, we'll, uh, and we'll have a conversation. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that enlightening very in-depth <laughs> sharing your wisdom. Really, really appreciate it, Lena. Um, so once again, um, I we do have a few questions that we have received, but we would like to know if you would like to unmute yourself and ask the questions yourself. If not, I'll be happy to read your questions to Lena. Uh, just let me know, raise your hand and I'll unmute you and you can ask a question. I know we have um, uh, Fanny, um, because I, I, let me know if I pronounced your name correctly. Um, Fanny Freitz, we have a question from Fanny Freitz. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question? We'll unmute you. Okay, she's, all right, give me one moment, let me find you. Great, we have 39 uh, attendees already, very nice. Really appreciate it. Why don't we so, do this? Why don't we have uh, people type the questions in? Because it might be a, there might be a, some a, a bit of a delay, and then if I have uh, you know additional qu like questions to ask the individual person, then we can go into a video chat. That might be. Um, should we do it that way? Maybe have people ask the questions um, via chat. There might be a bit of a delay. Sure. Uh, Fanny is here and she's ready with her. Okay. So, hi, Fanny. Hi, how are you? First of all, thank you for this session. It's really inspirational and there's been a lot of food. Hey, I'm just an apology. There's, there's a lot of feedback. So if we can ask everyone to, to mute themselves if they're not speaking, that would be great. Thank you. It's gone. Thank you so much. Fanny. All right. Yeah. So, well, thank you again. Um, it's been great to listen to you. Um, I'm a teacher and my question is, um, which tips would you give us uh, to apply this innovation IQ mindset uh, in a classroom? Anything um, that you would recommend? Yes, absolutely. I mean, education is such a big area right now. Um, with where, where in the world are you, Fanny? Which part of the world? Well, I'm from Argentina, but I live in the Basque country at the moment. So yeah, I'm based here in Spain now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah, so certainly in Europe, um, in the last 12 months, the education se sector has been hugely disrupted because children are working from home, adults are working from home. Um, and so there's been a forced innovation, if you will, because now everyone's using, you know, digital and so on and so forth. So I think one is, um, and I, I, you know, I don't know obviously enough about which level or, or age group you're working from, but really across the board in the education sector, you've got here a sector that's very slow to innovate, right? Because it's really steeped in it's steeped in tradition and often limited resources. So, as a teacher, what you can do within an institutional setting is to one is. You know, we're, we're asked now, I'll tell you, as educators, we are, are we are required now to not only become experts in our topic, right, just history or math or, you know, English or, you know, whatever it is. Now we also have, have to be tech experts, right? We also have to, na we, we're now navigating this virtual environment. And actually, it's the same for everybody, no matter what, uh, what space they're in, where, you know, we're now change instigators. We're playing so many roles beyond what we're playing um, that we have to, we have to open up our mind to 
one like we have to get on the technology bandwagon frankly you know we can't we can't ignore that reality anymore no, no matter what your expertise is if you went in because I'm like, oh, i love history and i want to be a history professor uh we can't ignore technology and we have to look for ways to engage our students in in this virtual environment so we have to learn new tools and new skills we actually have to be developing ourselves now more than at any other time in history um, so i think sort of having that sort of like you know agile mindset really a fluid mindset is really going to be the way forward um, look for opportunities to engage your students um, you know i think i i think as educators we have a responsibility we're working within a in a institution that is resistant to change but thankfully because everybody across the world is experiencing the same challenge we now have an opportunity to speak up and say like collect like bond, you know bond together with other teachers um form networks forums a community like this you know in your sector is a great way to connect to share resources share ideas share what's working so that you can fast track your progress um, and then as it's easier to get together as a group to now go to your board to go to the higher ups and say here's what we're noticing here's the support we need here's where we need the resources as a group you become much more powerful so that's one area and then on an individual level you're really looking for ways that you can just add value to your students in new ways you know for that if that's virtual if that's a hybrid reality um, I think this is a real opportunity to really look at how you're delivering to students and how you're preparing for the, for the future of work. Is what you're doing and is what you're teaching them relevant? Is it really preparing them? Because if it's not, and, and I, I, even pre-COVID, you know, I was, I was speaking at universities and I was, you know, I was talking about this change that was going on in the workplace because even at the university level, students are struggling with relating what they're learning to going into the workplace. They're like, well, I'm learning all these skills, but actually I, I, that's not relevant. I'm racking up all these bills, you know, student loans, but it's not relevant anymore. And so we've got this great opportunity as educators today to, to look at one, upskilling ourselves so that we're really stepping into our power as teachers. And then two, looking at our curriculum and our content to say, are we teaching them are we checking a box? Like, are these the things that we're taught? To, or are we really serving them? Are we teaching them to be better problem solvers? Are we teaching them to think so that when they go into the workplace, they're not learning things from memory or by rote. They're learning how to solve problems because that's what the workplace is looking for. When you, and you can cite examples. You can look at people like um, uh, Elon Musk, uh, t you know, Tesla, um, Jeff Bezos, LinkedIn. They are specifically saying to their work, work people, we don't care what your education background is. They've said this publicly, we don't care. I want to know what skills you have and if you're willing to learn, we're even willing, they're even willing to pay you know, to, to send their people back to school because they're identifying what are the opportunities that are coming in the future that we need to prepare the workforce for. So you can cite these examples, cite these data points to say, look, let's prepare our kids. And you got, you know, when you band together with other educators, you become a power force um, and, and a voice for change. So I hope, uh, I hope some of those things serve you, Fanny. Uh, Fanny I, um, and I wish you luck and keep me posted on your journey. I'm really Thank happy. you so much. Yeah, amazing, amazing. I have so many notes now good. to start working on that. Good, good, good. Thank you. Fantastic, <laughs> thank you. Great. Actually, uh, I want to thank you also, Fanny, for first of all, for the question, because that was one of my questions to Lena. And, and Lena, you've addressed my question as well. And I just want to uh, throw this in that Fanny and I, we are both agile educators. So <laughs> I, I didn't know your background. Yeah. <laughs> we are agile educators and uh, nothing makes me happier than seeing my students transform and become a better learners. And that's exactly what we try to provide in our classrooms and agile classroom is the learning tools. So here, you know, here's the thing, and I, I don't want to kind of, this is a whole other topic in itself, and I, yeah. but I just want to point out that if we're agile, if you're an agile educator and you're teaching this to your students, you've got to live it. You've got to live it in that sector. So if you're not seeing that change that's happening on a bigger scale, on a, you know, on a higher level, then you need to be a voice for that change. 
it can't just happen in the classroom. It has to be, you know, we need to figure out the language. Right? You're, you guys are prime, you know, primely placed to say here, we can't just talk the talk. Now we've got to walk the walk. Absolutely. You know? And we've started this movement uh, a while ago. Agile in education is all up and that's all we actually do. We, we share our views, our data, our experience that students love it. And it's time that we go beyond the classroom. And I, I'm in higher education, so I encourage and I welcome and I call on my other colleagues, other departments to collaborate and then, you know, at a larger level. But um, we welcome you to join and support our movements, Lena. Thank you for the support. But we really do want to move on to yeah, another <laughs> other questions. Um, and so if you have questions, if you'd like to unmute yourself, please go ahead, do so. If not, then I'll read uh, uh, another question from our team, our team lead, Priya Patra. Uh, she had a, uh, a great question, if you don't mind, Lena, um, yes. answering this question. So large organizations are usually constrained with hierarchies and structures. And so her question is, how can these organizations be more innovative while still being under these hierarchies? Yeah, so this, 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 a lot of parts of this question. So number one, I'm gonna, I'll give you two, uh, two, um, two parts to this. Number one is on an individual level within an organization, I think it's really important for organizations to invest in their people. And that means really helping them to develop an innovation mindset. So this is really, you know, this is us talking, you know, helping individuals to understand how to be more responsive to, to be uh, responsive to change, um, how to be more agile, how to be more flexible, uh, how to be better problem solvers. We need to, uh, organizations need to look at how to put, uh, how to build innovation teams um, and then, uh, and, and create an environment of innovation. The, the environment that we create really can uh, inhibit us or it can activate us. It can put us on, you know, light, light fire in us. Um, so look at the environment that we're creating and then the culture within the organization. And when you've got a large organization, you've got these, uh, I am not the word you used, um, like hierarchies, you know, and structures and so on. I think it's important to kind of just to create, I, I, I call them like miniature ecosystems within an organization. So especially when you're, when an organization is looking to innovate and it's something that's big, like a big moonshot idea. Um, it's, it's really hard to make that progress when there's 10 people and 10 levels in an organization that you have that you know that you have to go through to make a decision so i always recommend i that that big organizations create an innovation hub a distinct innovation system within the company that is geared towards driving innovation uh, so it could be you know like it could be like a little startup within the within the big company that has the, the resources and the support of the executive team. Um, it can, uh, it has the mentorship as it's needed, but it's operating more like a little startup within that big company. And it's got its own rules and it's got its own parameters and it's got its own value system. It's really operating like a small company. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. Thank you. Uh, we thank you for the response. Um, we have uh, uh, Rosarika in the audience would like to ask you a question. Rosarika, please unmute yourself. Turn on your video. Hi, hi, Hannah. Can you see me? Can you see me? I can see. Hi, Rosarika. I can. I can see you. Yeah. Hi, Lena. Thank you so much for this uh, good time, good moment. Uh, my question to you is, uh, if you see, we have so many women in the corporate sector who are stuck and who have been working in the same company for more than 10 years. Uh, the reason being because of personal uh, reasons or maybe they are not comfortable or they, they got the comfort zone in the same company, various reasons, but they are working in the same company for quite some time. And the moment when they want to take the switch, they are struggling a lot. So for those population of women, uh, what is your suggestion and what kind of tips would you give? So, so you know, I think as women, we undervalue ourselves. As a, as a, as a group, we undervalue ourselves immensely. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if you're talking about a general or if you're talking about your situation specifically, 
I am I am one of them. I am working in the same company for almost 14 years. I have uh, uh, changed so many roles. I was an Oracle DBA for nine to 10 years. And after that, as, a, as soon as I became mother, I had to take a hard call on switching my profile from Oracle DBA to project management domain. And now I want to take a switch to a different uh, company or different uh, profile. So yeah, it, I am one of the example, but I know there's so many people like me who are in today's uh, time. Okay, so thank you for sharing your story. Um, I, I want you to just for a moment, just reflect on my story. And there was a reason why I shared it. I, I'm one of those, you know, I've done like six or seven different things <laughs> in my lifetime. And a lot of people are like, how do you, you know, how do you do that? How are you six people in one? Like how, you know, how, but I think that's a reality for a lot of people is, you know, it's very rare now to find people that are, have been in the same role for 20 or 30 years. They've done one thing for a very long time. Um, you know, if you, you know, you said you've been in one company and you've been in different roles within that company and you took a break and so on. First of all, if, you know, if you're looking to move to another company or if you're looking to even change roles or moving into a different space, now's the time to do it. And the reason I say this is, first of all, the market is changing so much that if you see an opportunity for something, and especially if it's an area that's underdeveloped, you know, there's a big need for it right now. And so this is really about identifying opportunities, identifying trends, like where there's a real need for, you, for that skill set that you want, then apply for it, absolutely apply for it. You might need to do, a, you know, maybe a courses or some training, you might need, you know, maybe need to start uh, at the bottom and maybe work yourself up if that's, you know, if that's, if that's a possibility. Uh, but I wouldn't be afraid to put yourself out there. What I would say is I want you to go back to your, you know, all your experience, because we as people, we have amnesia about all the skills uh, that we've developed. We, we forget them. I want you to go back to your experiences and depending on what the role, the next role that you want to go for in this different company, think about the culture of that company, think about the actual role and the skills that you're required for that role. And then I want you to think about all the different roles that you've had up until now and where you learned those skills. What situations have you been put in where you've developed those skills? Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes people think, oh, I don't have leadership skills, but they've, they've mentored, you know, if they kind of think back to 10 years in the, you know, previously, they've some, you know, they've mentored people in, in, a, in a career somewhere. They've had, you know, they've had, or they've, you know, in a, in a um, community environment, for example, you know, they've done something where they've had to like look, you know, mentor or, or lead a group of people. So think about all the experiences you've had, even as a mother, frankly, I wouldn't even discard that as a mother. Oh my gosh, you are, you know, you are juggling so many things at the same time. Um, boy, that, you know, that's something. So, but I, you need to be able to articulate all the things that you're doing and how that's going to help you. If you're doing, you know, if you, if you, and I'm going to give you an example, if you're entering a role that requires you to project manage, for example, and project management's about balancing and juggling different things and prioritizing. And I mean, you learned that as a mother, absolutely. So you can, if you can talk about your skills and figure out how to apply that to the current, to the next role you want to go for, even if it's for a different company, that's what you want to do. People miss that gap, right? So they get scared because they think, oh, I'm not qualified. I don't have the skills and experience. You need to figure out how to take all your experience in, a, in your previous roles, in a non-work environment, in the community, in the family, and how does that apply to where you want to go? And then think about what the company wants. So if the company, like what, what gap are you filling? What problem are you helping the company solve? That because of your skills and experience, you are perfectly positioned for that. And, and be fearless because, you know, this is your time. Right now in every company, you know, the, the supporting women and supporting uh, women that, uh, and, not, uh, and supporting um, underrepresented groups is a big thing right now for companies. They're really pushing to embrace uh, and encourage and leverage that talent. So if you can position yourself um, as the perfect person because of all your experience, you know, you've got a, you've got a great shot. So go out there, be bold, be brave and go for your, go for your dream. Thank you so much. Love you, Lina. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> Thank you, Lena. We have so many questions. And uh, we have someone here. He's actually our favorite, Mr. Lee Lambert. He's here. He's the founder of PMP from Ohio. Hi, Lee. Welcome. Very happy to be here. I've not run across Lena before, but I shall again in the future. Hi, Lee. I just spoke um, to a, a group of uh, project managers in in the uh, in, in UK and Ireland, Europe, UK, Ireland, Europe, and it was a keynote speaker for project management and PMI over there. So uh, I'm very familiar with project managers. Well, I just put in the chat that uh, I've never really heard anyone with that diverse a background. And I've been preaching that for the last few years. I, I think there's so many opportunities that are passed up because of the very thing you pointed out. We don't think we can do it. Uh, highlighting the mother experience is a classic way to see that you can prepare to do almost anything. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you something. I, you know, the big, the big mistake, I think that individuals um, make as they're looking to progress and move forward or even just how to be you know to show up and shine in, in their role in the workforce we've been told for so long let's specialize let's specialize it's been drummed into us as children and you know as uh, you know even in in higher education and it's not i don't think it's as relevant now because you know as automation and technology and robotics and so on are taking over and doing those doing those roles our job is to actually be deep generalists and then to make those connections that other people aren't doing. So, you know, it's, we, need to, we need to be multifaceted and multi-skilled in today's environment. The, the higher education data confirms that. They're saying about 70% of the people are not working in the area with uh, the uh, credentials that they brought from college. Right. Absolutely. They're, they're not. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Awesome. And the other point you hit on, just to make my last point, and I'll get off, is your comment about the opportunities for women. I'm a huge promoter of that, not just because there's opportunities because of political pressure, there's opportunities because women are really good at what they do. And finally, the organizations are waking up to the fact that they've got a resource there that they've not capitalized on. You know, so here's, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of data that's proving that when women are in, uh, you know, and it's not just women, actually, uh, underrepresented groups as well. It's not limited to women. But, you know, when uh, these groups that are, have pr traditionally taken a back seat, when they're more in executive level roles, actually, the company is financially doing better. And you're absolutely right. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be tied to financial metrics. But we're in, you know, we're in a uh, we're in a world where metrics and, and numbers matter. So, we, you know, we look at that and hopefully we'll get to a place where people will just, you know, raise their eyebrows in disgust with the fact that we're just, you know, just we're saying it's about the numbers. It should just be about human, you know, human humanity and leveraging talent. And, the, uh, you know, the big, the big, for me, it's like I want to encourage, uh, encourage women, and women or, or groups that are, or individuals that have perhaps been in the background because of their education, because of the opportunities that have been available to them to say, look, now that it's now that it's in the media, now that you know the big companies are paying attention, whether it's by force or whether because they realize it's the right thing to do, this is your time to not sh not hide in the background. You know, yeah, and I think I think the other thing is that, that the women have been assigned a stereotype that gets in the way of those opportunities. And I I encourage the women that I coach in my organization to use a concept I call passive aggression uh, to make sure people understand what your capabilities are. Well, I, you know, there, there are certainly different ways of approaching it. I, I, I think that women, you know, you can do that. I, I, I personally believe that women have grace and strength and the ability to, to, to stand in their power without actually being passive aggressive, but, you know, we just have this ability because, you know, we're, we're, we're better, you know, obviously I'm making generalizations here, but just in general, we have that ability to empathize and connect with people, uh, you know, and uh, to 
and which is much, much needed, especially in this virtual environment, is to really be able to read people and connect with people deeply. Um, you know, this ability or the, the skills of motherhood that you bring, you know, we bring to the table. Um, I'm not a mother. I have a nephew, um, but I've, and I've, been, I've raised uh, my, my huge extended family with lots of cousins um, <laughs> that I helped raise as, you know, as I, as I was a young, young girl growing up. Um, so I, can't, I you know, I, I recognize that we learn different skills as a sister, as a mother, as an aunt, as a parent, and, 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 and men do too, not discounting that at all, at all. But we bring those skills to the table and because we're not getting paid for it like this, we undervalue it. And so your job as, 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 as women right now is to, un, like, to really identify what those skills are that you've learned and then translate them into a language that the, the business world understands. You need to connect I agree. those dots. I, you need I to agree. connect the dots. That's all as you need to do. As long as someone the will give you, if someone will give you the opportunity, that's the, that's the issue, I think. But it's, it's, it's getting the opportunity, but it's asking for the opportunity. Sure. You have to Absolutely. put yourself out there and say, here's who I am. Here's what I stand for. Here's what I can deliver you. Here's what I've learned from my life experience, not my education experience, my life experience. That and defines passive that, aggression for me. You call that passive aggression? No, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's owning your power. It's really, it's, it's, you know, for me, you know, different sides of a coin, but I think it's really standing in your own power. It, we don't have to be aggressive about it. We just have to, you know, goddess is really standing in our own power. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much, Lee and Lena. It was a great discussion. And yeah, I also believe in the passion. Uh, you know, you have to go out there with your passion. Don't be afraid, be uh, courageous and share your passion and show the world what you can do, what you're about. Um, as my, I, I can share with you that I was the only agile educator started doing this agile teaching and learning methods just on by myself without any presidents, didn't have any data, no examples, no one to follow. Something I started because I believed in it. And I used to be in the doors of my directors and deans every single day saying that you gotta let me do this. You gotta <laughs> let me do this. And I think uh, that's important. Uh, yeah, you bring out your passion, your skills, and your <laughs> show the world what you can do. Hannah, I just, uh, you know, what you, what you just shared, um, I think it's so important to actually look for those people in our life, right? And so whether it's finding it through a community, um, my, I, I shared briefly that my grandfather was mentored by Gandhi. So he was a huge influence in my life. I grew up from the age of five. I knew I wanted to, like I knew in my soul and in my heart, I wanted to change the world. But that was because of the environment that I was brought up in where it was normal to think that way. And I know that not all of you have had that environment, right? We live in different cultures and different environments where sometimes our voices, our, our voices really squat. And I, and I get that and I understand that. Um, so I, I really encourage you to join, you know, to look for mentors who have led the way. You know, for, for a lot of people, Gandhi is an inspiration because he was the one person that said, this is not right. Here's where we need to make change. Whoever that person of influence, join communities. This is a great community because it's providing a smart environment. Um, but it's so important to, to, to look for mentors and sponsors who can guide you on your journey because they're going to give you a lot of strength to, to be able to actually open up doors for you, to open up resources for you. We're hearing feedback. I think... Uh, sorry, Lina, to um, interrupt you. We have a question from Kunjal and Chitra who are in the audience. So we'd like to give them a chance to ask their question. Um, Kunjal, go ahead with your question. Uh, and after you answer this question, I have a question from Chitra, but she would like me to read the question for her. So uh, Kunjal, go ahead. Thank you, Anna. Hey, hey, Lina. Thank you so much for uh, you know a great session. I. I I really admired the conversation between you and Lee, and uh, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, made me think that you know uh, we do 
probably almost everything in our organization. Um, you know, we try to show up our skills. We try to maintain the balance between a home and uh, the profession. Uh, I'm a project manager by profession and uh, I am, uh, my graduation is a psychology <laughs> as yours. Um, and I'm a singer. So, you know, I, I try to uh, balance out with my passion, with my profession, uh, how to, and you know, everything else. And I try to relate my psychology with the resources that I work with, with the managers. But I still feel that, you know, in spite of having a different innovation hub in the organization, having various um, platforms and initiatives in terms of diversity and inclusivity, but I still see there is a gap. We have a lot of women workforce in our organization, but the leadership is, is very rare. You know, I, I see hardly a, a one leader woman or a you know, single senior um, manager who is a woman. So I still see that you know, males or you know, I'm sorry to call out that way, <laughs> but I still feel there is a gap. In, in terms of opportunities. Um, we are given good hike when you do well. The name is everywhere. Um, you know, you're, you're, you have a supportive manager, but still when it comes to growth, I still feel that there is a little bit of sexism that exists. I, I would like to know how is it possible um, to get rid of that or you know to explain your manager that it's not just about the finances it's not just about having the credit but it also about giving or getting that position you know where you can manage a team where you can uh, you know run an in initiative entirely by yourself you so are you asking that you want you want to you want to uh, figure out a way to have your management team to give you those opportunities that you're not getting. Yeah, and to remove that biasness and, you know, a kind of um, the male dominating culture that we have, you know, a, a kind of give them a wider uh, mindset to remove that and, you know, go beyond that, you know, that females can do everything single handed. Sure. Uh, so what, what part of the world are you in, Gunjal? Are you in India or some other part? Of the I, world? Am in India. You're in India. I am in India. I am in India. Yeah. So there's a, obviously there's a cultural part, and I, I know that India is certainly progressed, but there is certainly that sort of you know the cultural um, relationship um, between men and women in the workplace that that exists in in some companies more than others. So you know, change takes time. When you when you're overcoming deep rooted tradition, it's something that takes a long time. Um, the, you know, one is obviously forming groups, forming networks of communities and showcasing your value, helping each other to grow, mentor each other is one thing. Um, looking for somebody, and I know you said you, you, there's only one person or very few, you know, female leaders within your organization, but I would certainly, whoever is within, that, within your company uh, at a higher level that you can reach out to, to be a champion for your cause, to help, to advocate for you, to, you know, to maybe set up a community where, you know, where skills building can, can happen is definitely something I would, I would recommend. And then the other thing is, you know, you want to, sh you want to be able to show, you know, it, it, oftentimes, like we have to really demonstrate our value. It, you know, it, it's ridiculous that in this world that we have to, we have to do that, men do it too. But frankly, I think, you know, I think if, if, if you, you know, if you look at the data points, we're getting to a conversation about men and women, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll answer this, you know, just, yeah. really, um, just generally, for example, you know, the data, the data tell, shows us that um, men will speak up or say they're competent about something when they know you know, twenty percent of of something, and they they'll they'll say, "Hey, I know, it. I can do it. I can take the task," and then they'll figure out the eighty percent as they on the job as they go along. Women feel like they need to know eighty percent before they're confident enough to say, "I can do the job," and raise their hand. So there's this little there's a difference in the way that we show up in the world, right? In general, so I want I you know we we need to learn to stand in our more in our power. Uh, you know, we're going to have to learn language that that allows us to be uh, to communicate the value. To we need to, you know, we need to showcase uh, and have in our companies more training that highlights the bias that each of us bring to the table, and then and then and then 
finally, we need to have men as allies. You know, we cannot be working against them, really. That you know, there is sometimes men can feel threatened. So, you know, in, certainly in environments where you know, for forty years they've been the boss, they've been running the show, and all of a sudden, you know, we're asking for change. Um, it can be threatening. So we really Absolutely. need to create. There needs to be an education that needs to be happening, so where we understand actually, you know, what we can help you. We can bring these skills to the table, where you know we can bring a different perspective. And I'll tell you, there's 101 areas we work with innovation in women all the time. You know, the fact that you know the fact that as a woman, you can now you know you have you have an understanding of uh, of the products you use. You're doing the shopping. You're buying the cars, you're deciding, deciding what homes that your family live in, what food you're purchasing. You are the major decision makers in the household. So you have a voice. And when companies realize that they can you know, lead on your expertise, that opened up huge opportunities to tap into new markets, new revenue, and they need your in input. They need you. So recognize your value and you know, and then you need to be bold and stand in that power, gather community. Uh, there's a lot more I can talk about this. So, you know, if you want to, um, you know, if you want to reach out to me privately, um, you know, for more insights, I'm happy to have that conversation with you. But uh, I hope that's, yeah. you know, that's a, that's a start for you. Uh, thank, sure. you yeah. Lena, thank, thank you, Lena. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, uh, there is Sanskruti who has a question. She's not raising yes. her hand, but in case she wants to. Uh, sure. We actually have question. Uh, Chief Treasurer was the first ones to send the question. I want to read the question to you, Lena, but I think you've addressed it. It was Rosarica's question. Part of her question is that why women needs to keep proving time. And again, it always starts extra mile to work in spite of everything else that is there to multitask, even when we start up and recognize our value. Uh, there will always be passive aggression. So that was a hard comment. And I also wanted to read the question from one of my team members, Priscilla. Um, and But in the meantime, Lalita, uh, Sanskrit, and Padma, you guys have questions. Please unmute yourself, Lalita first, then Padma, and then Sanskriti. Uh, just go ahead, ask your questions. And Lena, I'd really appreciate if you could, you know, <laughs> take all three questions. All right, we're we're going to three questions. Let's go. That's yeah, good. yeah, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Hannah. My question for Lena is, I want to know more about your Buddhist journey, Lena. What exactly was the difference uh, learning that you had from that? And how, what was the inspiration for you to kickstart that? Oh, wow. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, so my, my mother's brother was a Buddhist. And, you know, I, I shared with you when I was, a, when I was young, even from the age of five, I was having, and it was a big influence from my grandfather, I was having thoughts and conversations that my schoolmates at five years old weren't having. You know, talking about change in the world, making a difference, the meaning of life. This is not a conversation that a lot of five-year-olds have, right? So I felt a little bit out of place as in, in you know, in my, I, I think I was like a five-year-old with maybe a 15-year-old, you know, mind at that time, maybe, I don't know. Um, so I, 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 I really was seeking, like, I felt like I was a little bit crazy because I couldn't relate to, to kids my age when I was young. And at 10 years old, I, um, I remember having a conversation with my mom's brother, my uncle, who is a Buddhist, and I was talking to him about these ideas, um, or, you know, that were on peacemaking and, and you know, create and, and um, changing the world and making the world a better place. And he said to me, oh my, that's a really Buddhist perspective. Like he, he said, you know, you should come to one of, you know, one of our, you know, they would have gatherings, meetings um, and so on where they would discuss these ideas. So I went at 10 years old and I was in this room full of adults having these conversations and I could participate. I felt like I was at home with these people because they were talking about things that made sense to me. Uh, so I really felt like I was at home and, you know, it, and over time, I just immersed myself more and more in that environment, hung out, you know, this is my community at 10 years old. It was like, you know, I, uh, I, I found people that I could connect with uh, that were interested in the things that I was interested in and it helped me to really 
it made me feel like I wasn't alone, you know, and I talked about building community and finding, you know, like-minded, your tribe of people that can support you on your journey. And it helped, you know, it helped me immensely. So that was really the start of my journey. And, and so, you know, I, I, I sort of evolved in the organization and I got, I got more and more responsibility. So by the time I was 16, um, I was looking after several hundred people and I had that leadership experience. Um, and you know, we're serving the community. So that was that was my that was my journey. That was my start. Great. Thank you for sharing. Um, Thank you. Plasma, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Plasma, go ahead. Please turn on your video. Okay. Hi. Um, thank you, Nina. Thank you, everyone. I think the conversation is going excellent. Um, yeah, let me quickly turn on my video. Yeah. Hi there. Yeah. Um, hi, Lina. Uh, my quick question is because we've been talking about uh, education, we've been talking about uh, IT corporate world as well. So my question is towards uh, both these things. Um, see, I, I'm from a corporate world. I'm more into program project management. Um, uh, we have uh, multiple programs for uh, freshers who are coming into batches. Right. Apart from the skill sets which are necessary for them to get educated in, uh, what other you know core skill sets you think that we need to add into those programs? Um, gosh, I, I, it's hard for me to give you specific because I need to know more mm -hmm. about your in company. general. In general, especially because you know how the youngsters' mindset is all about because uh, you know they come just come out of. Uh, the colleges and they, you know, their, their mindset is different. They're very active. They're very, uh, you know, uh, good at learning. They're quick learners. So keeping all those things in mind. I, honestly, I think ver rather than saying like to teach them what skills, mm -hmm. teach them how to be, uh, okay, a couple of things. One is I, I'm a big advocate for we need to be better problem solvers in the workplace. And sometimes education doesn't teach that. It should teach that, but it doesn't. It doesn't teach us how to problem solve. And that's like the number one skill. You know, we're talking about raising your innovation IQ. If you want to, if you want to get ahead in the workplace, you need to find out how to add value. And the way to add value is to problem solve. That's it. So that would be number one, is teach them True. how to think. So get this book. Get this book for each of your students. I'm not kidding you. This is like the cheapest education mm -hmm you know, versus like going out and doing like a thousand dollar course, because the, there's 21 strategies here. And after every strategy I talk about, I give action steps. So I literally give you the blueprint on what to do and how to take action on each of those strategies. So your students can read this book and then they'll have at the end of it, what they need to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would do that. That's like the number one, it, you know, if you want that resource, so that would be the number one thing. Then, then two beyond that is looking, you want to really, uh, like you need to figure out what, where they are and then what role are they in and what's the gap. And maybe you've identified the gap for them. Maybe they've identified the gap, you know, good chance. If you've, if you've got a, if you've got a leader, somebody who's, who, you know, a manager or team lead, who, who they are working with. Yeah, I think it's a joint conversation that they should be having together to figure out what's the growth plan for, the, for these people. You know, and I would, I would do, you know, you can, and other things you can do, you can do a survey internally and just ask these people, what skills do you need? What are the growth areas? You know, what, things like that. And then look at all of that data and determine, all right, what do we see here? What are the things that are most popular that people want to learn about? And maybe you can provide some training on, you know, start putting, a plan to put training in, in, in place for the you know the things that are most requested. So I think those are, those would be the, that's that's where I'd start. Thank, thank you, you so much. That thank you, Lena. Thank helps. you. Thank you, Bob. Um, I think we can have this conversation going for hours. <laughs> we have a oh, yes. very enthusiastic audience here. As I, I had mentioned to Lena that you know <laughs> you will have a very I'm gonna, I'm gonna take passionate one. I'm going to take yes, one, more question. Okay. one more question and we have to actually wrap up the session in, in, in two, three minutes. We already went over time. Really appreciate you guys You're still staying with us. So we will take one more question, Sanskriti. Please go ahead with your question. And if we can answer the question in one minute, 
We really appreciate it. And then we'll share, we'll go on with the closing session. Uh, Agaila and Priya Patra. Go ahead, Sanskriti. Can you hear us? Um, I can read that question for you. Sanskriti is not able to unmute. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Sure. Should I? Uh, go ahead if she's yeah ready. yeah so she thinks that she the her question is do you think gamification will be the next big thing for corporates and individuals to develop intelligence quotient so That's question gamification is the next thing so okay there's lots of ways to answer that um gam gamification has been a trend that is just it's been bubbling for many years uh, I would, there are, there are applications that are relevant. Um, it, it's one strategy that's relevant for corporates to, in, um, to utilize in a, you know, in a variety of areas. Is it the, the big thing? I mean, it's one, it's one out of many. Um, I would encourage you to really you know, look at what's the use case? What is it that you want to do? Um, why are you using gamification? Like, what, like, you know, is it through an app and you're building all levels of engagement? Uh, or, you know, it's for a live classroom environment. Uh, I certainly, I, I recommend you check out the TED talk that I did on gamulation and looking at how to combine games and simulations together. Um, but look at the use case and if there's a way of driving more engagement, it's one way of doing it. Certainly, um, you know, in this, in the last 12 months, we've seen a lot of trends that have emerged in the world. So there's a lot of opportunities and yeah, I could talk for another 15 minutes, you know, about, you know, we could talk about AI and 5G and, e you know, e-commerce and you know, their robotics automation. There's so much opportunity right now. So, you know, and then you can look at trends that are happening because people are now, they can't travel, they can't visit their families, they're building more local community, they want to support local businesses, they want to eat more healthy, more organic, people are cooking at home, um, people want, there's a move towards living more fully and more simply, um, sustainability, you know, obviously, you know, bring more diversity, equity and inclusion in the workplace. All of this, you know, rise of platforms like TikTok and Clubhouse, people are looking for ways to connect and build community. There are so many emerging trends that are happening now. So gamification is one of many tools that you can use to build engagement. So back, go backwards. Don't start with the tool, start with the problem. What problem do you want to solve? And then what's the best tool to solve that problem? Absolutely. Um, I thank you once again from the bottom of my heart and from our community, Lena Patel. That was an awesome, amazing session. Really, really appreciate it. We went over our time. It really happens. Actually, the QA session that lasts this long. And and guess what? We have more questions. Unfortunately, we cannot take more questions. We have to go on with our session. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. If I didn't get to your question, send me a tweet. Send me a tweet and I will respond to you on Twitter. Okay, awesome. so I, I'll, I'll make sure that I serve you. Just my tweet awesome. is at Lena Patel live here, but it, um, yes, I'll type it can, in the chat right now. If you can share it, that would be great. All right, with that, uh, without any further ado, Priya Patra, please take on, on our closing ceremony. I know you have something to share with Lena Patel and Agaila, go ahead. I know you have something to share with Lena Patel and I can't wait to see it. All right, here is a scribe done by uh, Agaila. Agaila, would you like to oh, say wow. something about amazing. it? Uh, amazing. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Can I have a copy of this? Yes, of course, we can send it to you. Absolutely. Oh, wonderful. There's uh, some more completion. I'll just add in a little bit here and there, and then, yeah, totally to you. I absolutely love it. I, I, Thank you. I'm going to get that printed in. I'd love to have it on my wall. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Agaila. Priya. Yes. So I will share my screen now again. Let me know when you can see my screen. So, yeah. 
So, Lena, that was a wonderful uh, session. And of course, I did learn a few things. First of all, introspect and find your differentiator. And I've already posted this on LinkedIn. You can have a look at it. Uh, secondly, walk the talk. It's not talking the talk. It is about walking the talk. And it is more, uh, more go beyond your educational skills. Talk about, uh, think about your experience. And that's how you're going to make a difference. And of course, one more thing I noticed, and Lee also told me this uh, while he sent me a private message on the chat, that diverse experience definitely makes you more and more creative. So these are my few takeaways from the session. And of course, there are lots. I couldn't capture everything. I will go through the recording again. And of course, uh, I'll try to digest as much as I can. But this is a small token of appreciation from our side, along with the scribe that uh, Agalia made for us. Uh, please do accept this and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you for showing up. I know we're all in different time zones and you know, you've given up uh, your Sunday, some of you, you know, late morning, early mornings. Thank you. Thank you so much for being, sharing this time with me. Yeah, so over to you, Hannah, uh, for the last words. <laughs> thank you so much, Priya. Thank you again, uh, Agaila. And uh, once again, thank you, uh, everyone who joined us. Again, uh, you are joining us from all over the world. And uh, it's on a Sunday morning for some of the very early morning, especially for Lena. She's in the West Coast, actually. So really. 7 o'clock in the morning with you guys. 7 o'clock so in the morning. I haven't even had breakfast yet. You guys are my breakfast. Oh, wow. <laughs> breakfast of champions. This is what it was for me. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Please go and have your breakfast. We're going to oh, let you go right now. But uh, guys, we're going to share the video of the session. Just like Priya said, I'll have to review this session about a couple of times for all the tips and insights that Lena shared. But my takeaway was to, um, I, I resonated so many things that Lena shared is that we have to be ready to take part in the VUCA world. And the way to do it is by raising our innovation IQ. Don't just be job ready, be life ready. Life skills is what we need to teach as an educator. I'm sharing with my community, with my Agile Educators community, with my aspiring Agile educa Educators community is that teach our students how to be Agile. Right. So um, that is my takeaway. And there's a lot more to learn. And I will be following Lena. <laughs> I'm already following her on LinkedIn. Follow her on LinkedIn. Follow her on we uh, Twitter. She's on YouTube. She's all over. And <laughs> she's just an awesome. Uh, it was it, really I can't say enough about this session. Uh, thank you so much. And with this, would like to end the session with uh I, we're coming back next month with an awesome special session again on on, on on mother mother day it's a special event and it's going to be a global event so look out for that uh take keep an eye on our social media uh, linkedin page facebook twitter and and instagram with that would like to end the session thank you take care everyone have a wonderful day evening and night bye 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 Hi, Leo. Hi, Lena, I'll be here. I know you wanted to speak to me. Bye, Katerina, it was so nice to see you. Bye, Sandy. Sandy, I see you. Bye, everyone. We have a little retro with our team. Bye, everyone. See you next month. <laughs>
for our Mother's, Mother's Day special event. Bye, everyone.